You guessed it, Buff Mafia underscore 716. Coming at you live. It's been a minute. We took a weird uh, unintentional break there from the live streams. We've been doing a lot of other content, but we are back to get you, Bills fans, NFL fans, Instagram followers alike, ready for the 2023 Buffalo Bills training camp. Yes, this is our training camp preview. We are about a week out from training camp for the vets, rookies. Already reported. They are already rocking and rolling. Dalton Kincaid, Osiris Torrance, Dorian Williams. We're going to talk about all three of those players in this live stream uh, getting into training camp battles. Okay, so positional battles. And you guys are probably going to hear a lot about positional battles as we get closer to camp, during camp, preseason. All right, we are here to give you your uh, preview. All right, for some, some of the better ones, we've got three. Uh, top three in order, uh, positional battles. We've got one honorable mention we will get to as well. If you are just joining, welcome. We've got a whole flurry of uh, people rocking here with us. Welcome, Grandma. I'm going to assume that uh, request to join the live video was an accident. Uh, LOL. Shout out, Grandma. Love that you're out here, though. Guys, we're going to jump right into it. Um, we also might be uh, welcoming on Nathan the Golfer later in this live stream. I'm thinking he's joining. and He's going to talk a little bit about a big storyline having to do with a coaching thing with the Buffalo Bills, a little sneak preview. Uh, so we'll hopefully have Nathan on later. And then I got to give a quick shout out the 716 Mafia shop for uh, this beautiful shirt. And while I'm on the topic, really quickly, and then we'll get into the position battles, I promise. If you haven't seen already, check out the Buff Mafia underscore 716 shop slash Blades Buzz underscore 716, our new Sabres affiliate. Link in bio. We got a shop. We got some merch, cups, mugs, shirts, uh, flip-flops. Dog bandanas, anything you can think of, beach towels, puzzles, okay? So that's in the bio. Uh, go shop it up. Great gifts in there. All right, and without further ado, guys, we're going to jump right into it, okay? Top three positional battles, okay, going into this 2023 Buffalo Bills training camp, all right? So we're going to start off with our honorable mention. We're going to work our way up. If you're just joining, welcome. This will also be posted to the account later, so shout out to all the viewers that are not watching this live because this will be on the account, and then we'll have this on the YouTube as well, okay? Without further ado, though, okay, our, our uh, honorable mention, okay? We're going to keep it general. It's the running back room, okay? That is that is the honorable mention, if we want to call it the fourth uh, highlighted positional battle going into training camp. All right, so if you are new to the uh, account or if you're new to the offseason, if you want a quick refresher as far as the running back room, the projected running back room, okay? James Cook is our projected starting running back. All right, and I'll I say that with uh, he, uh, some hesitancy, and I'll tell you why in a second. Okay, the consensus number two back is Damian Harris. I think by a lot of Bills fans and NFL fans alike, they've kind of pegged him as the number two. Then we're seeing a lot of uh, projections as Naheem Hines as the third running back on the roster. Obviously, has that special teams ability. Okay, making him a little bit more valuable to retain and to roster, uh, being another running back. And then the projected RB four. And again, I'm saying this with a little bit of hesitance, and you guys will know why in a second, is Latavius Murray, okay? A lot of people didn't even realize we picked him up. We picked him late in the free agency. Um, and then two guys I think that are on the outside looking in are both the undrafted free agents, Isaiah Bowser and Jordan Mims, two undrafted free a agent running backs, two UDFAs. I think Bowser's got a slightly better chance to maybe crack the roster. I think he's almost a lock for the practice squad, Bowser is. So that's a quick overview of the running back room. That's my honorable mention if you're just joining for our fourth, if you know, honorable mention slash fourth uh, position battle that I cannot wait to witness and, and look at unfold during training camp and preseason and beyond. All right, so now diving a little bit deeper into that one. I won't spend too long on this because it is our honorable mention. We've got three other position groups I want to hit. But James Cook is the projected starter, you know, second round pick by the Bills. Uh, if you guys care to guess current rushers on the Bills and where they ranked last year as far as their total yardage, and again, you can take that with a little grain of salt. A lot of that has to do with system. Some of these guys are on different teams. Okay, uh, The running back that had the most yards last year is the guy who's currently projected as an RB4, maybe not even make the roster, in Latavius Murray. All right, So I think a lot of people got it, and I just say that to – I don't think people should be so quick to sleep on the uh, up Western New York – I think it's from Syracuse – Upstate New York, we'll call it native, in uh, Latavius Murray and his potential in this Bills offense. All right, I, I think a lot of people are because his age. He's I think he's like six three, two twenty. Could be what, this missing piece. All right, playing in Buffalo, we've talked about getting more physical on offense, especially. Latavius Murray might be that you know missing piece. I'm not saying he's going to come out and win the starting job, but don't sleep on him. All right, working our way back. All right, Naheem Hines. 
a guy who was uh, not able to, I'll just call it, was acclimate fully to the Bills' offense, joining it late last year. Part of that could have been he had a huge role on special teams. Okay, so I think a lot of Bills fans alike didn't really even care that Naeem Hines wasn't super involved in the offense. Would have liked to see a little bit more. He's a dynamic player with the ball in his hands. But given his, obviously, the two-touchdown game against New England, I mean, we're not going to kid ourselves, uh, was such a contributor on special teams. I think a lot of Bills fans were okay with him, again, joining this team late last season during you know trade deadline. Okay with them having a more limited role in the offense. Now, year two with the Bills, first full year with the Bills, I expect a little bit more. I want to see the guy do some stuff on offense just because, again, simply he is electric with the ball in his hands, Naeem Hines is, okay? Damian Harris, number two. So this is where I think it could be a complete toss-up for running back one. I have completely sold myself on Damian Harris if he can stay healthy. So it was obviously banged up a little bit with New England last year. Um, ended up kind of get, becoming a, a second option, even a third option in that offense, mainly with Ramon J. Stevenson. Uh, emerging as the clear bell cow. So that running back one option in New England kind of flowed through Stevenson. A lot of Bills fans know about Stevenson. A lot of Bills fans know about Harris too, though. Guy who had plenty of success against the Bills uh, in the last few years. I think it was in three games scored five touchdowns against the Bills. Yeah, uh, not not that bad. So the guy can play. I think I, I think I've got that number right. I think it was in three of five games he scored a touchdown against the Bills. Bottom line is he scored some touchdowns against the Bills. All right, maybe I'm a little selective memory trying to, trying to block that out. But, uh, yeah, then you got James Cook. A guy who my hesitancy to just straight up call him the bell cow, the RB1, unless he put on some significant weight in this offseason, he is straight up slender for a running back. And that's, not, that's a, a little bit of a critique in his uh, durability, but I think more speaks to guys built like a wide receiver. He's 5'11", and he's got some serious length to him. It's part of the reason the Bills fell in love with him there in the second round is his ability to contribute as a pass catcher, James Cook. So again, I say that to just paint the full picture of the player. Um, a guy who I don't know if you want him running it three down, you know, on every down, basically, is what I'm saying. Uh, you know, it's different if you get him involved in the screen game. But guys, that's my honorable mention for, oops, Check one, two, check one, two, check, 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 check. Let me know if I lost audio. I hope I did not. Uh, but that's my honorable mention, okay, for position battles going into the camp, all right? Running back room, just in general. It's a complete toss-up, and I promise I'll get a little bit more specific with some of these battles as we move along. Let me know, everybody. I think I still got audio. Just someone comment if they can't hear me. Guys, number three position battle going to camp, okay? And this one straight up could rank higher, but I'm just going to, because of the sexiness of the position, I'm going to put this third, okay? It's the offensive guard battle, and I might start losing some viewers here. I might start getting some snores. I don't care. we got to talk about the interior offensive line. It's a serious, heated battle. Thank you, Brandon Allen, P17. I hear you. That's what I'm talking about. It's a little bit of, it's a little bit of group effort, guys. Thompson or Kyle 77. Shout out you two. Um, if you're just joining live, welcome. We're talking about position battles, okay? The offensive guard into your offensive line. Obviously, Mitch Morse went healthy. He's penciled in as your center, okay? But offensive guard, okay? You sign Connor McGovern. He projects as your starting left guard, all right? And we'll talk a little bit more about why. Uh, Ryan Bates projects as your, uh, excuse me, starting right guard, all right? So starting right guard, Ryan Bates. Osiris Torrance. If you don't know, obviously, second-round pick, rookie, that shakes the whole thing up. And that was a player who I loved in the draft. It was a guy I considered in the first round uh, who could really play either guard spot, but I truly think projects better as a left guard given his pass-blocking abilities. He's an excellent pass blocker, clean player, very few penalties. Connor McGovern is as well. Um, very clean player. If we're talking about clean players, you can't you know talk about that without talking about Connor McGovern. Um, so those three... I, I, any combo of those three, I think, could be your starting guards. And I think all of them give flexibility to realistically play either guard spot. I think Bates is as versatile as he is on the offensive line. I would say left guard is like the one spot. Bates, you know, I wouldn't love having him there, but he is so freaking versatile. You know, Bates could probably play left guard. Bates could also very well play right tackle, all right? Let's say there's a scenario where... Um, Connor McGovern is your starting right guard. Rookie Osiris Torrance, excuse me, Osiris Torrance is your starting left guard. I could absolutely see Spencer Brown and Ryan Bates battling out for right tackle. And that's not to, you know, downgrade what uh, David Questenberry and Brandon Snell bring to this team as, as uh, backup slash potential starting tackles. Um, 
But Ryan Bates is a player that I think the Bills really like what they have in him, and they feel comfortable with him starting on several positions on that offensive line. So third position battle, my number three is the offensive guard position battle this upcoming training camp. If you're just joining, welcome. Running backs was our honorable mention for position battles. We're most looking forward to seeing in the 2023 Buffalo Bills training camp. Uh, it's definitely going to be the guard spot, both guard spots for me uh, there. My number three, again, running backs, honorable mention. Brandon Kukrow, I wanted him in the first round. And the fact we got him in the second is insane, talking about our Cyrus Torrance, that he was passed up on this far into the draft. Yeah, and as someone that was watching the draft crazy closely this year. I think it was more just a testament into the unpredictability on how the board ended up falling, you know? There wasn't anything, like, crazy to me that happened right before Torrance was taken to be like, I can't believe they took so-and-so over Osiris Torrance. It was kind of just teams picking who they picking their guys, you know? And the Bills were lucky that they landed with their guy in their lap, a potential first-round talent in Osiris Torrance, offensive guard out of Florida, a guy who's absolutely going to be competing for one of those starting guard spots. Now, I'll move on to the second position battle in a second, but I will say my betting favorite right now, your week one starters, is McGovern at left guard, Bates at right guard, okay? That's not a knock on the rookie. I just think two guys who have been here more in the offseason, obviously, than, than Torrance. McGovern, not much longer, but still an established veteran in McGovern, a guy who the Bills signed to a pretty hefty contract. Um, that's my projecting week one starters at guard. Now, I'm rooting for Torrance, and he's our guy. We love him. I just don't know if it happens week one for him. And that's, you know, again, you can develop. That's not the end of the world. All right, number two position group. Battle that we cannot wait for, all right? It's going to be the battle for the starting tight end spot. Yes, you heard me right. And I know a lot of people on this live stream are going to say, Buff Mafia, it's as much as we're all excited to see Kincaid, it's Dawson Knox, all right? That may be, and Dawson Knox may be your week one starter at tight end. Uh, why, why is this an interesting position battle that I, I'm keying in on, the tight end battle? We've, had, we've heard so much talk about... Uh, the fact that we're going to use two tight ends uh, this upcoming season, that that's going to be the play. We're going to have Dawson Knox likely on the line, and we're going to have Dalton Kincaid all over the place, backfield slot. You've heard that from this account. I've been a proponent of that, okay? that Keep that in mind, okay? how What percentage of snaps last year do you think the Buffalo Bills offense ran two tight ends? I'm going to give people a few minutes to comment. I want to hear what people think. What percentage of snaps do you think that the Buffalo Bills under Ken Dorsey ran two tight end sets last season? Comment it up. I'm going to read the comments and I'll let you know in a second. Um, take that with a grain of salt and that Kincaid, I truly believe, is just going to be offensive weapon Dalton Kincaid. Okay, so there might be more instances where Knox is on the field and Kincaid is in the slot or in the backfield, and it may not be a two tight end set, but that is his position. Okay, I like that we're already getting a comment. Noah Schlebo said 13% lower. Lower. We had less than 13% uh, of snaps last year were with two tight ends. Okay, I'll let a few more people comment, then I'll let you know. Okay, here we go. E1 2047, probably like 5%, 4%. 4% of the Buffalo Bills' offensive snaps included two tight end sets or more last year. That's crazy to me. That's including goal line. I mean, I, I get that the Bills have Josh Allen. He's kind of their power back. Bills Nation said 2%. Not quite that low, but I like, I like where your head's at, Bills Nation. Um, 4%, okay? Now, that number could jump up to 20% this year and have Kincaid be in different spots other than the tight end spot. Over 15% of that 20%. You get or you get what I'm saying. Over 75% of the 20%. You get what I'm saying, okay? Not to throw too many numbers at you, okay? But if you think that they're going to, like, just straight up have both those guys in line over twice as much as we did last year, you're kidding yourself. It's just not what the Bills, I don't believe, what they want to do offensively. Quentin Morris was a more than serviceable, excuse me, serviceable tight end two last year. If they wanted to run tight end two sets last year, they absolutely could have done more than 4%. So all that being in, you know, kept in mind, we got a guy that was just extended in Dawson Knox, who is a fringe top 10 tight end already in the NFL, maybe top you know, seven or six, depending on who you ask, given his touchdown efficiency. Um, and then you got a guy who's the highest drafted Bills tight end in over you know, two decades in Dalton Kincaid that we traded up for and who almost everybody had the best pass catching tight end in the draft. So as much as we want to you know, embrace the... <laughs> Anakin Skywalker meme that, that Dawson Knox puts out that this is where the fun begins and here we go two tight ends yeah it's again those are two good teammates and I, I'm I'm happy about the dynamic of that overall tight end room in general now with even Quentin Morris too um, Tommy Sweeney obviously leaving in free agency but uh, 
don't think it's not a competition. <laughs> it is. Those guys are going to be pushing each other. They're different players. Dawson Knox definitely your more traditional tight end. But again, there's only so many mouths to feed. There's only, you know, talk, forget about, you know, even who's on the field. Who's, you know, getting the target share? Is it going to be Dawson Knox or Dalton Kincaid? So if you're just joining, that was our number two matchup. Uh, excuse me, not matchup, but uh, training camp battle, position battle that we're most looking forward for the 2023 Buffalo Bills uh, training camp at St. John Fisher College. If you're just joining late, number three was the offensive guard battle between rookie Osiris Torrance, recently signed free agent Connor McGovern, and uh, Buffalo Bills vet Ryan Bates, who's been with the team for a few years. Big uh, friend of Josh Allen's too, Ryan Bates. I think that's worth mentioning. Those guys are super close. Um, you know, when you're close to 17, and, and you know, as crazy as that is, and we've seen these teams uh, with their, their franchise guys, you know, that matters if you're, if, you get, if you're in with the franchise guy. It shouldn't, but it does. Um, and then our honorable mention was the running back spot, you know, with James Cook, Damian Harris, Latavius Murray, Naeem Hines, undrafted free agents, Zay Bowser, and Jordan Mims. It's a, a crowded room, and I'm really curious to see how that running back uh, competition plays out as well. All right, so we just gave you our honorable mention running back uh, position battle is what we're talking about, guys. Uh, if, you're, if you are watching this later on the account, I always I like to apologize. Sometimes it feels a little repetitive because you're watching this later. Like, how many times are you going to say Buff Mafia? We got people joining. I got to keep people in the loop, all right? But if you are watching this later on the account, we appreciate you as well. Or on the YouTube, we appreciate you. Um, Noah Schliebus, I'm loving the running backs right now. We are too, my man. But our number one position battle, and this is pretty obvious. Uh, I'll let a few people comment, see if they can guess. The number one position battle, we've kept it all offense so far. This is going to be defense. It's really not that... Not that shouldn't be that surprising. It's who's going to start at linebacker next to Matt Milano. Okay, middle linebacker is what we're calling it. But again, this base nickel defense, both linebackers are essentially middle linebackers. It's just one is strong, one is a will side linebacker. That's the Matt Milano role. Who is going to start at linebacker opposite Matt Milano? So, Bills reporter, uh, insider Joe Puscaglia reporting again, it's early, but it so far. The top three, I'd say, names per him and what we're seeing in Bill's Twitter and the rumors, okay, in no particular order, uh, but I'll give you the order that Joe read off, Piscaglia, Bill's beat reporter. It was, and he read it off, Terrell Bernard, Tyrell Dodson, and rookie Dorian Williams, our guy who we freaking love, Dorian Williams. We were following him all draft. We were pumped that he landed with Buffalo. But uh, again, second-year player, Terrell Bernard, uh, fire last name, who was... The Bills' third-round pick a year ago. Tyrell Dodson, who been with the Bills a minute, veteran, uh, physical thumper of a linebacker, really fits that middle linebacker role really nice. Again, doesn't have that sequoia tree uh, length that Tremaine Edmonds had, but really nice uh, you know, in the box and, and meeting guys, meeting running backs uh, at the line of scrimmage or behind it, Tyrell Dodson. And then rookie Dorian Williams, so the absolute speedster, uh, Tested in the 95th percentile in the 40-yard dash for linebackers this year. Rookie class, Dorian Williams, uh, projects to be really solid in coverage. Really, so I think this is where you'll you'll get mixed opinions. I think is a very solid tackler, but there are questions about his uh, ability to tackle at the next level. Just because we haven't seen it, and that might be warranted. Again, he's not a huge linebacker. He's between six one, six two on a good day, two twenty. Um, I'm a big Dorian Williams guy. We'll just leave it at that. Rookie, I, I don't I don't know if he'll be the week one starter, but I think either way he's going to have a really bright future with this Bills team, especially in special teams. Uh, we had a special teams post. Two guys that we uh, we were doing the Buffalo Bills have the blank special teams in the NFL. Go check that post out a few posts back if you missed it. Two names we left out, Dorian Williams, rookie, and uh, – Tyler Matagovich, uh, who is getting up there in age, but I still think a really solid special teamer. Not to get detracted from uh, the linebacker competition, but I'm glad I just mentioned Tyler Matagovich because another guy who is technically in the competition, I think, for this linebacker spot. I don't think he'll be the starting linebacker next to Matt Milano uh, week one if I had to bet on it, Tyler Matagovich. But veteran guy uh, who's in that linebacker room who the Bills like. And, it, again, when he's been in there, in my opinion – I think he's always looked pretty solid, Tyler Matagovich, as far as stepping in with the defense, whether it's been in preseason, injury. Two more guys, though, competing for that spot. It's crazy you know, how deep this competition goes. Not one of those top three that Joe Piscaglia referenced or that I'm seeing a lot of the Twitter space, but veteran linebacker A.J. Klein 
and second year linebacker, seventh round pick, Balon Spector, both very much in this competition as well. So we got a lot of names to pick from as far as the linebacker spot. Uh, who's going to be starting next to all pro linebacker and Madden snub rating Matt Milano. So again, you heard the top three favorites. That's not to discount AJ Klein. It's not to discount uh, Balon Spector, even Tyler Matagovich, even though he's more of a special teams ace. But talking about those top three, just because it's looking like those guys early on before we've started hitting are looking really solid. One really, I think, big takeaway from the fact that those three guys are standing out so far. We know Tyrell Dodson, or we project Tyrell Dodson to be the most physical of that bunch. The fact that he's already kind of flashing or looking like he has a control of that position before we even start hitting Tyrell Dodson, that bodes well for him. And in my opinion, I know Tyrell Bernard was the first one. Uh, a lot of people point to, I think because he, he was a Day two draft pick just last year. A lot of people want to see him succeed. I know I want to see him succeed. He's got a freaking sexy ass last name, Bernard. Let's go, baby. Uh, but no, uh, Tyrell Dodson, realistically right now, this is just if I had to put my money on it, I think he's your starting linebacker opposite Matt Milano week one. If, it, if the season would start right now, if they were to throw the pads on, um, that would be my projection knowing who we have uh, in the room. Nathan, what is going on, my man? Great to see you. Thank you so much for hopping on. Uh, just going to read a few comments real quick, guys, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the linebackers and pivot. Um, how did we steal Osiris Torrance from Trey Legacy? Yeah, we talked a lot about Osiris Torrance. Trey Legacy, I definitely recommend you watch the uh, earlier part of this. Save the account later. You can hear all about Osiris Torrance. Um, I am so pumped up for this linebacker uh, competition, guys, because I really do feel confident in the players that we have in that room. I know it's not Tremaine Edmonds. Tremaine Edmonds coming off his best year as a pro, gets, gets the bag with Chicago. You know, classic Wiz Khalifa, uh, Charlie Puth. It's been a long day. Really sad seeing him go, uh, Tremaine Edmonds. No, but, you know, life moves on, guys. That's the NFL. Um, and, you know, we have other dogs in that linebacker room. It's Terrell Bernard time, maybe. Maybe it's Tyrell Dodson, rookie Dorian Williams. Um, just can't wait to see who ends up emerging. And again, with the linebacker position, it's likely going to be one guy uh, winning that. It's not going to, you know, I don't, I don't see them doing that by committee necessarily is what I'm saying. Now, maybe whoever doesn't win that competition, whether it's a guy like AJ Klein, who really excels in that third linebacker role, when we play teams like the Patriots, when we play really run heavy teams, that possibility still exists for, you know, whoever the odd man out, so to say is, uh, but yeah, really excited. Again, I think if, if I had to bet on it, it's Tyrell Dodson right now. We're pulling for our guy, Dorian Williams. We're pulling for Terrell Bernard. Uh, but yeah, that's the linebacker competition, guys. If you're just joining late, again, a little quick recap about our top four position battles uh, for camp. All right, Our honorable mention was the running back position. I don't know what's going to happen there. Straight up, again, if we had to guess, it would go Cook. <coughs> Excuse me. Cook, Harris, Hines, and Murray with uh, Bowser on the practice squad. But again... I think you could have almost any combination of those four for the running back position. I think a lot of people are getting too quick to uh, project what that's going to look like. Latavius Murray had the most yards by far of anybody in that group last year. James Cook, who's projected as the running back one, had uh, the third most. So including le- And fourth most if you include Josh Allen in that bunch. So uh, as far as rushing yards last year. Again, Devin Singletary was in that backfield, so take that with a grain of salt. But that's what we're looking like with running back. Number three is the offensive guard competition. Uh, Again, stud, steal, second round of Cyrus Torrance. That being said, though, I still project they're going to roll with the veterans early. And then if someone struggles, you got our Cyrus Torrance on your heels. You know, that guy's taking your spot, whether it's um, McGovern or Bates if they struggle. And I still like both those players. I'm not saying I'm rooting for that, but that's just what the, you know, matter of fact is. You got first round talent that fell to you in the second round in Torrance. He's going to be fighting for a spot. Number two, training camp competition, uh, position battle that I can't wait, tight end one. And a lot of people are going to maybe shrug that off as Dawson Knox, man, that's his job. It's like this, it's his job to lose, okay? Dalton Kincaid apparently looking really fresh so far, uh, both in OTAs and in the early stages of training camp, as the rookies have already reported. Do not count that guy out. And again, I talked about it a lot. Bill's two tight end usage, 4% last season. And again, Kincaid might be a little bit more of offensive weapon, so that number could spike drastically uh, depending on where they line him up. But just keep that in mind. They, they're not a team that went a lot of two tight end sets last year. A lot of Bills fans high on Quentin Morris. 
in my opinion, they had that option if they really wanted to, especially with no like stud, you know, wide receiver three on the roster at the time or wide receiver four. It wasn't like they were you know, just dominating with three and four wide receiver sets. Uh, we'll see if they turn more to that this year with, you know, Hardy and Sherfield. I digress, but that's, uh, that's what we're looking like as far as um, the tight end competition. And I already gave a quick shout out to the 716 Mafia shop, but again, let me, uh, send me this electric 585 Mafia shirt. Shout out them if you want to check that out. If you want to check out some of the Buff Mafia or the Blades Buzz underscore 716 merch, link in our bio for that as well. Quick little plug there. Definitely check that out. Uh, and then our number one position battle, guys, uh, for the camp, training camp, 2023 Buffalo Bills training camp at St. John Fisher College is going to be, you guessed, the linebacker competition. Whoever's going to start opposite Matt Milano. Again, in no particular order, uh, the three front runners are Terrell Bernard, Tyrell Dodson, and rookie Dorian Williams, with Balon Spector, AJ Klein, and even Tyler Matagovic right there in the mix as well. All right. And uh, yes, you guessed it, I am projecting we're going to keep six linebackers. I think we're going to keep all six of those guys. Um, excuse me, seven if you include Matt Milano. Um, with potentially, if someone's a cock candidate, I'm not rooting for this probably be Matagovic as we've gotten a lot better in the special teams overall. He becomes a little bit more expendable for that roster spot. I don't want that to happen. We love Dirty Red. Um, but yeah, that's that's just kind of what we're looking like, guys, as far as the linebacker competition. All right, we're going to end with a uh, quick storyline, Bill's training camp storyline, and then we will end. Nathan, I don't know if uh, Nathan the golfer, different Nathan, but shout out Nathan. Uh, Nathan the golfer was going to hop on. I don't think he could have made it, but shout out him as well. Um, we're going to talk about Sean McDermott, defensive coordinator, guys, okay? Quick little touch on this and what to look for, okay, in camp, in preseason, what have you, okay? Big difference with McDermott as defensive coordinator from an actual defensive scheme slash play calling standpoint, I expect the Bills to blitz more, okay? That's not saying we're going to become a blitz-heavy team. That's more saying that Leslie Frazier, uh, with his hand being mostly in the defense, this was the least blitzing team, one of the least blitzing teams in the NFL the last several seasons. Now, that's not, not to say that that was an ineffective strategy. The Bills have one of the best defenses in the NFL under Leslie Frazier and Sean McDermott together. But if we go back to McDermott's days as defensive coordinator in Carolina, much more aggressive defense on tape. There's no really denying that. Uh, that's just what they looked like under McDermott with, uh, as being a defensive coordinator. Tying into what we just talked about with the linebacker position, okay, and some personnel things. Do players like Tyrell Dodson, do players like Dorian Williams with blazing speed, do those more physical specimens amp up a notch with their blitzing abilities, especially over players such as a Terrell Bernard or a, uh, who's another, you know, even Matt Milano is not a crazy blitzer. You know, I'm not saying he, his role would ever be diminished in this defense as a result, but just something to think about. You know, it's going to be a little bit of a different defensive philosophy just because it's a different person. And I think there was a lot of overlap with Frazier and McDermott in their, what they wanted to do on defense, which was a beautiful thing, a harmonious thing for them. But Frazier's not there this season. Uh, we're going to have our head coach calling defensive plays. It's going to be really interesting to watch preseason. Obviously, I don't think they're going to be showing too much, but it's going to be interesting to see how the communication flows. If Matt Milano is the signal caller, as linebacker on defense, if it's one of those guys that I just mentioned competing for middle linebacker, uh, I bet on that being the case. It'd be really interesting to see if it's a rookie in Dorian Williams. That'd be really intriguing uh, with, you know, obviously McDermott stepping back in as a defensive play caller. Obviously not a rookie play caller. He, you know, he's obviously doing that. That's how he came to fame in this league with, with the Panthers, McDermott did. But it's going to be really interesting to see how that kind of unfolds. One big storyline I just wanted to touch on really quick. Um, going into camp and preseason is McDermott as defensive coordinator and specifically how that impacts some personnel decisions, obviously play calling, but, uh, you know, how the Bills approach certain situations, you know, in games defensively with McDermott and his, how he's going to do things. It's going to be interesting to see how uh, that starts to unfold. So guys, if you just missed it, uh, if you're just joining, guys, we're going to wrap up, but do not fear. We're going to have this posted to Buff Mafia underscore 716 for you all to watch later. It's also going to be on the YouTube page. YouTube page is linked in our bio along with our Twitter page, which we recommend you check out, along with our new shop, the Buff Mafia underscore 716 shop. Uh, if, you have, if you're a Sabres fan, highly, highly recommend you check out uh, Blades Buzz underscore 716. Sabres affiliate. Uh, we're not the only ones that run that. We, we obviously have a big hand in that, being that it's our direct affiliate. But, uh, my, you know, 
best friend uh, since fifth grade, went to college with, played college lacrosse with, Tyler Bushnell. I don't think he's on right now, but also known as Relly T Golf. His golf account is going to be doing that uh, Blades Buzz underscore 716 with us. So some really nice Sabres content. He's much more of a uh, Sabres guru than I am. I'd say he's the Sabres equivalent to uh, me with the Bills is, is, uh, uh, in that he just can't get enough. <laughs> Excuse me, I lost the words there. But yeah, uh, absolutely. Go Bandits as well, Noah Schliebus. If anyone's interested in starting a Bandits uh, page, who cares? Let's get that going as well. Let's go, Lax. Uh, you guys rock. Get Buff Mafia underscore 716. We're going to have this posted to the account. Uh, watch this and if you're interested in the top position battles for the 2023 uh, training camp. If you want to watch it again, I don't care. Uh, if you're just joining, go watch the whole thing. Let's go, Buffalo. Hey, 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 take it easy, guys.